Hello, my name's Sophie Watson and I'm at the Open University and I'm part of the Moving Marketplaces project team funded by HERA. In this project, we're interested in investigating the everyday placemaking capacities and mobility practices of market traders in order to better understand how marketplaces are produced as inclusive public space. Under the COVID crisis, however, we've had difficulty continuing our research in place since many of the markets have been closed for most of the time. So here we're interested in looking at the national and local response by governments to markets in their towns, in the UK, in Switzerland, in Spain and in the Netherlands, in order to fully understand their response in this time of crisis. This short film introduces you to the countries and their responses. Hi and welcome from my home in the Netherlands. My name is Samuel van Eck and I'm a PhD candidate in Urban Geography at Radboud University in Nijmegen. As the researchers of the Moving Marketplace project, Jan of Melik, Joris Schaperdonk and I investigate how the placemaking capacities and mobility patterns of traders turn marketplaces into potential inclusive public spaces in the Netherlands. Hi, my name is Jan of Melik and I'm an assistant professor in Urban Geography at Radboud University. Both the social interactions and the mobility patterns of the traders have been highly affected um, by the outbreak of the coronavirus um, that reached the Netherlands in March 2020. In that month, the Dutch cabinet adopted the first regulations to slow down the virus in the Netherlands. And marketplaces were at the center of their attention with regard to preventive corona-related measures. In the very beginning, um, some markets closed down completely, as their dense and public character were understood uh, to pose a major risk to a further spread of the virus. Other marketplaces were allowed to remain open, or were reopened after a while, albeit under very strict regulations. Non-food traders were not considered to be part of a vital food chain and hence were completely, almost completely excluded from marketplaces and, and thus from their profession. Following the instructions of the so-called safety regions, our case studies, Valkenswaard and, and Amsterdam, the managers and food traders at these marketplaces, uh, changed the physical and spatial layout of the markets to make sure that visitors kept their distance of one and a half meters and did not congregate for any other use than immediate buying. Hello, my name is Joris Schapenlong. I'm an assistant professor in geography and I'm working at Radboud University. Um, during this Moving Marketplaces project, we noticed in Corona times how market pitches were set up far away from each other. Market stands were kept with see-through plastic. And meeting places that normally allow for loitering, such as benches and standing tables, were sealed off with cordon tape or other things. Community service officers dominated the streetscapes in enforcing the new measures. So gradually, the nature of marketplaces shifted from functioning as important meeting places of easy sociality towards more disciplined and sanitized space of economic exchange and mere economic exchange. The outbreak of the virus marked the beginning of the temporary death of public space, as we called it. Yet this temporary death of public space did not render the social interactions in marketplaces completely invisible. Maybe even quite the opposite. The absence of physical togetherness reveals mutual interdependencies and the precarious position of some traders, especially those who were struggling with declining turnover rates. To help the non-food traders who were excluded from their right to trade in Valkenswaard, both traders and visitors shifted to online platforms to offer help and support to each other. Employees of the Amsterdam City Department of Market Affairs 
decided to lift the daily market tools to make it easier for traders who do not have a permanent spot at the market yet to enter the market and to recoup their investments on other costs. Finally, traders all over the country who faced the immediate closure of their markets in the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak started to collectively organize themselves with the help of the National Traders Association. In Dutch, they are called the Centrale Vereniging voor Ambulante Handel. In times of uncertainty about the impact of the new rules, protests emerged to criticize the different judgment calls of the safety regions. These examples show again how the social and political dynamics of public space do not only occur within places, but extend beyond their physical boundaries. By moving beyond the ground level specific sites as the loci of analysis, a whole array of interesting findings shows up. A question that begs further research attention from this perspective relates, for example, to the mobility and mobility effects. While the corona-related preventive measures have reduced unpredictable activities of sociality and mobility, especially market traders seem to have sought mobility strategies to continue their businesses and uphold the social value of public spaces for themselves and for visitors. For example, by switching to the online uh, online communities to offer each other mutual support, but also to switch to home delivery. The investigation of the politics of these mobility strategies that revolve around the temporary death of public space can shed a new light on the production of inclusive public spaces. Hello, I'm Marco Madella and I work with the Spanish team of the Pompeu Fabra University in the Moving Marketplaces project. The markets that are part of the Spanish study are the Boqueria market in Barcelona and the weekly market in Vic. The first mention of La Boqueria dates back to the 13th century, when tables were installed near the old city gate to sell meat. Today, the main covered market has permanent stall, selling both traditional and more exotic products. Next to the main market survives a farmer market, selling all vegetables and fruits, many originating from the agricultural land around Barcelona itself. The weekly market in Vic is held in the Plaza Mayor since the 9th century. Today we can still find stalls selling products from the land, as well as stalls with all kinds of clothing and accessories. The current situation related to the pandemic, with Spain declaring the state of emergency in March, has deeply altered the normal functioning of these public spaces, as well as the mobility of both merchants and customers. Indeed, during this period, the markets were closed to avoid the concentration of people, and they are just now coming back to some sort of normality. Hi, I am Maria Lindman from the University of Pompeu Fabra, Barcelona. From the institutional perspective, um, the pandemic has drawn out ever more clearly the existence of a hierarchy between the different types of, of traders. Our two case studies have shown that the traders who sell at moving markets are really in a much less favorable uh, situation than those who own their stalls in municipal markets like the Boqueria. Now, this brings out an important question of trust between the administration and different types of, um, of traders. La Boqueria, which is at the very heart of Barcelona, has remained open throughout the lockdown period in the state of emergency. And this is because it's, uh, it's considered to be part of the essential food supply system of the city. Now, the market of Vic, which is a temporary market, uh, was closed for a month and a half. Um, this decision was made by the local government who considered that the city already had a good enough of a food supply system, that is, enough supermarkets and also uh, a municipal market. Now this is surprising because uh, the market of Vic is very much a symbol of the city because of its centuries-long tradition. However, it seems that, at least for the local authorities, it's not really considered to be part of the, the food supply chain. And it's more of a folkloric phenomenon that simply takes place a couple of times a week. So um, this has um, 
make, made us uh, believe that the the fixed and the immobile um, location of the municipal markets has become a guarantee of controllability of public space. While temporary markets still represent disorder, and in a way, it takes us back to this um, 19th century uh, imagery of street markets as something uncontrollable and uh, even immoral. Now, at the same time, it's also important to say that even though the Boqueria market has been allowed to, to, to remain open, only about 30 to 50% of the stalls have been actively operating. Now, this has to do with the fact that the Boqueria is very heavily dependent on tourism and also bars and restaurants who they sell to. So this means that many um, businesses actually uh, lack regular customers. Now, the situation is quite different at the farmer's market of the Boqueria. Uh, so th it's this part that is attached to, to the Boqueria. And uh, the local farmers who sell over there have told us that they've really seen quite little difference in their sales numbers. And this is precisely because um, they have a lot of regular customers from the city of Barcelona. Now, the Vic market is also um, gradually returning. In this very first phase of de-escalation, only a quarter of the uh, stalls were allowed to set up. Now, the decision of who gets to return was made, um, taking into consideration the, the principle of territoriality, which means that the traders from the municipality of Vic, or from the close-by region, were the first ones to gain their license again. And this is interesting because, uh, in a way, local... Um, traders are given priority um, and they also become a certain type of agents of, of biosecurity. Hello, my name is Joana Menet and I'm at the University of Neuchâtel in Switzerland. On March 16th of this year, the Swiss government declared an extraordinary situation under the federal law of epidemics due to the coronavirus. This is the most severe status under the law and equates to a state of emergency. The federal government instituted, among other measures, a ban on all private and public events among them all the markets taking place in Switzerland. Not only the non-food markets, but also all the food markets had to close. Since mid-May, markets were able to reopen again, but only under a set of precautionary measures and strict rules on hygiene and social distancing. In Switzerland, food markets are separated from non-food markets. Mainly, the traders selling on non-food markets were those who lost their workplace during this time and thus their income, while the farmers and vegetable sellers were often able to continue their business activities. Within very short time, they found new strategies to market their fresh produce. Besides a small share of online marketing, they set up shops on the farms, which were still allowed, or put into place a delivery system for vegetable and fruit boxes. In the following, we would like to engage with one particular element. The pandemic made visible the crucial role of mobilities for the functioning of the markets as public space. Let me explain this shortly. Mobility is a fundamental way through which market spaces are produced by the market traders. In Switzerland, street markets take place mostly only once a week or even less often. Also, there are no permanent market stalls as we know it from other countries. This means that market traders are very mobile in their everyday life. They circulate every day from market to market within the city, but also further from cities to cities and to villages in order to sell their goods or vegetables all over Switzerland. But also the customers are of course mobile. They move to the markets in order to buy the goods. 
In other terms, markets work because the customers meet the traders in co-presence and they create the market space together. This co-presence is only possible due to the mobility of both. Hello, I'm Janine Dahin from the University of Neuchâtel of Switzerland. So, I would like to talk about what now happened with this mobility during the pandemic. First, what we saw is that tra market traders they developed new forms of mobilities when the markets were closed down. I have to mention that Switzerland did not have any domestic mobility restrictions. So people have obviously been encouraged by the government to stay home, to work at home, but the public transport system has always been running and it has always been possible to travel by car as long as the two meter distance was respected. But closing down the markets meant that traders and the customers could not meet up on the normal public market space. And one of the strategies of the traders was to develop new forms of mobility. Many became, as was mentioned before, engaged in home deliveries of vegetable boxes and so on. On the other side, many customers became now immobile, also linked obviously to the stay home campaign of the Swiss government, particularly the elderly and vulnerable ones became very much immobile. However, the traders, they were confronted with the problem that they did not have phone numbers, email addresses or any addresses from their usual customers, which is due to the characteristic of immediate social interactions on the public marketplaces. Facebook, ear-to-ear -ear rumors, etc. helped them to find their customers or also to get new customers. Second, there is another aspect of mobility which is important indirectly for the food markets. Switzerland closed in March the national borders and this had an impact on foreign workers who in normal times work on the fields, mainly in agriculture. Particularly farmers who sell on markets are sometimes dependent on the mobility of these foreign workers and we can see how different mobilities come together and how this entangled mobility is crucial for these local public marketplaces. Some of these foreign workers still were able to enter Switzerland, others could not. And finally, some did also not want to come because they were afraid of getting infected. Because in March, Switzerland had, at those times, one of the highest prevalence of corona per capita within Europe. In a nutshell, the restrictions due to the pandemic interrupted these old established mobility networks, which are of crucial importance for the creation of public market spaces. But new mobility patterns were created. And we see market traders without a market seriously put into question the fundamental way of how market as public spaces, how markets at public spaces are functioning. We've been looking at markets in Britain in the time of the Covid crisis. Now what's the most noticeable thing to say is that they've been largely ignored. The government has pushed local citizens to go to their supermarkets seeing them as the best place for obtaining food. In actual fact, however, markets would make a lot of sense. Markets provide food for up to 12-15% of the local population in most cities and towns. Markets are actually quite safe. You can go into a market, you can breathe the fresh air around you, you can keep social distance. Why have we not had markets playing centre stage? Instead, supermarkets are constantly mentioned as the place we should be doing our shopping. 
What we have found, however, is that local governments have treated markets in very different ways. There really has been very little consistency of response across the UK. Some local governments have continued to charge their traders rent for the stalls, the stalls they aren't even using, leaving these traders in a very, very difficult position. Other local governments, however, have thought innovatively. They've taken away the actual costs of running the stall from the traders, so rents have been frozen for up to three or even six months, which has enabled those traders to keep on trading. These have largely been the vegetable, the fruit and other food stalls that have been able to continue trading. So that's been positive. But by and large, in Britain, markets have been ignored and supermarkets have been prioritised as the place that we should all be going to get our food. Rather short-sighted, we might say. My name is Marcus Brenes and I'm at the Open University in the UK. Currently there is a lot of insecurity and many market traders are worried about the future. Some traders have already shifted to online shopping and delivery, whereas others are relying on support from the government. Market managers are seeking to open markets as soon as it's possible and safe to do so. However, there are of course concerns about the safety of both traders and customers. Traders especially are exposed to the virus because they're engaging with a large number of people on a daily basis and it's necessary to implement uh, certain means to ensure that they remain safe in these circumstances. Another concern, of course, is that there might be less uh, customers these days as many people are staying at home and doing their shopping online instead of going to to these public places at the same time markets are potentially more safe than supermarkets because they are often outside which uh, could make them attractive especially now over the coming summer months another positive aspect of markets is that they um, could mm, become spaces that offer opportunities for people who have lost their jobs or businesses to start a new and set up businesses with less investment than, for example, setting up a shop. So there is a lot of uncertainty about the future. And even if we, we don't know exactly how markets will be in the near or long future, as this pandemic is generating a lot of important changes, it does seem clear that markets will continue to play an important economic and social role in cities uh, across the UK as well as Europe. Hola, no, ahora no. Muy bien. Otro día sí. Dale, ¿qué quieres? ¿Tú qué, qué tienes?